Sports Talk Station in San Diego County. Uh, that is uh, Chris Ello, Tony Gwynn Jr., Matt Scraby together in our Odyssey Palace Studios. 2.01 is the time. Kicking off a uh, two-and-a-half-hour program here on this Monday ahead of Monday Night Football. It'll be the Chargers and the Cowboys coming up a little bit later on this afternoon. We open with a quick scoreboard check. And Tony Gwynn Jr., do not mess with Texas. Mm. The Rangers on fire in the American League Championship Series already with one win in the bank. And they open today's game with four runs in the top of the first inning. RBI singles by Adolis Garcia, Mitch Garver, Nathaniel Lowe. A throwing error, uh, two errors actually by uh, Framber Valdez, uh, Valdez the, catch, the pitcher for the Astros. Fielding error and a throwing error contributing to the Rangers batting around in the top of the first inning and jumping out to a 4 nothing lead. Bruce Bochy is uh, – his club is just on a roll right now. Six straight postseason wins, five of them on the road, and Nathan Ivaldi uh, gets through the first inning unscathed with a four-run lead. Yeah, it reminds you a little bit of the Giants run, right? They Similar, so, right? So Same soon manager. as the playoff start, yeah, man, this they, team becomes a juggernaut. I mean, and, this is a team that the Padres embarrassingly swept yeah. here in San Diego yeah. during the regular season. I, I remember Texas could not hit the ball out of the infield for an entire weekend against the Padres. Yeah, no, it, it, they're they're playing some of their best baseball right now, and this is when you want to be playing your best. But it, it it takes me back to uh, one of the early series between these two teams, and um, I I believe it was Maldonado who had some words and. Something was said along the lines of, "If this is going to end up the same way it always ends up, us winning in the division, us being uh, back in you know the spot that we have been in seven straight years." Yeah. Well, all of that has turned out to be correct, except that they're getting their butts kicked right now. Yeah, the Rangers are. Uh, <laughs> they have filed all of that uh, that away, and uh, they are getting the Astros back at least right now. Yeah. As they've jumped out to a uh, – Montgomery was brilliant last night in game oh. number one. I mean, you can't – you don't just shut out the Astros on their home field in the playoffs for seven innings. And uh, Montgomery did that, and then the bullpen uh, wiped out the rest and uh, got a home run in there mixed in by uh, your number nine hitter, Tavares. Tavares, off yeah. Verlan Verlander. And uh, Texas, like I said, they've got it rolling right now. We'll see if the Rangers can keep it up. We'll keep you up to date on that ball game here this afternoon. The NL Championship Series gets underway tonight as the Arizona Diamondbacks will take on the Philadelphia Phillies, who are looking for a return to the World Series. Game one gets underway after our program is over at about 5 o'clock this evening. So we're underway with that. Also, uh, congratulations goes out. Uh, this is my backhanded slap at Scraby's 49ers, but... Congratulations once again goes out to the 1972 Miami Dolphins. They will again remain the only undefeated team in <laughs> NFL history after both the 49ers both went down. and the Eagles went down yesterday. We'll uh, talk plenty of NFL. We've got our good, bad, and ugly coming up uh, about a half an hour from right now. So we'll recap everything that happened in the National Football League. And then uh, finally... Uh, I say hi to everybody out there in the internet land. For the first time ever, the Gwyn and Chris program can be seen on an internet stream. And for that information, I go to our producer, Matt Scraby, because <laughs> I, I don't like, really understand how it's all working. I was like, Chris I just is know that I, well. I just know that I have to. He got to his limit right there. Yeah, that's he, all he I've handed got. It that's off all to I've you. got. Uh, it's an internet stream. You can actually uh, now watch us uh, do the program. And uh, Scraby, you can please tell everybody how to do that because I have no no idea. Well, today is a uh, soft start for the soft start. Yes. Soft opening. What is, what is a soft start? It means that we're just trying. We're just trying it out right now. I mean, we're gonna go into the cameras. I'm just. Uh, this is the first time we've been live. I've, we've tested it last week. Yes, we did. I went outside and I listened. We sound okay. Um, so you can find us at ninety seven three the fan SD on X. And then on YouTube, I'm going to tweet out the link here shortly, but you could also watch us on YouTube as well if you go to the 97.3 The Fan channel. I only have one beef with the video right now. Okay. It confines me to this little square box that I'm in. Like, I, you know me. Try I, to stand up and see if it follows you. I think they do is that. It, does it follow? I don't know. 
the camera will follow you apparently. Camera is no. not following right now. Not you following. Just, you're just you gonna have my... to adjust apparently. Because <laughs> Tony likes to. Stand. I can't believe I like, there would be. I any... like to move around. I slide in my chair often. You're but... gonna be in and out of uh, camera range, is what <laughs> right. you're saying. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I'll I'll make it work. I'll definitely yeah, make I, it work. I've always and and I've been told this so many times that I've come to believe it. Uh, been told that I have a face for radio. So I don't know that. <laughs> I am uh, necessarily ready for this, but uh, just away we go anyway. Just don't expect that, you know. I mean, listen, if, if it comes about and people end up giving me clothes to wear, I will do it. But don't expect for me to change up the clothing. You guys are going to see some pretty ridiculous outfits come through here. Oh, yes. Um, as, as, you know, it's intended to be on radio. But well, I know one thing. I, I will always try to look relaxed because yeah, exactly. I haven't worn a collared or button-up shirt uh, on the radio Ever. I mean, so that's it's all not I just going to start now. That's all I just finished wearing for seven months was college yeah. shirts. And not so, be so you're going to so. get a lot of T-shirts. You know what we'll you're going to get relaxed. You're going to get for three me, black shirts. Yes, three black shirts. <laughs> and then today for the cameras, I wore he my wore whale, whale shirt because I knew that we were doing the cameras today. All so. Right, so I just wanted to establish that. Your Nike whale Look, shirt. I want to lower yes. expectations of yeah, what people do, are going to see on If you do tune in to the stream, uh, you'll see Scraby. Uh, that is his favorite T-shirt that he owns, and uh, we see it often. So it's high time all of you see that. So <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, what we've got in store for today. Again, uh, tell her, okay, so if you're on, if you're on, uh, like on your phone, you go to Twitter, you could at 97.3, SD uh, at 973 the fan SD on I'm sorry, Twitter at 97 yes. no point right yeah no point so no just point. 973 the fan SD the fan SD I'm about to tweet out the YouTube link on that same account so All right. be so ready be for YouTube that YouTube link you can uh, tune in and watch us and uh, we hope a uh, merry watching to all of you as we kick off the uh, program that uh, will include a daily gambit big 5 and a little bit later, Chris versus the fans. Everybody have a good weekend. Scraby, I'm, I'm sure you're disappointed, but uh, the 49ers have plenty of uh, plenty of excuses as to why they did lose that game yesterday, not the least of which being a rookie kicker missed a very makeable field goal there at the end. But you lose Debo Samuel and uh, Christian McCaffrey, you're lucky you're even in the game, I think. I mean, that – that's two pretty good weapons that the, the 49ers were without. Is there any word on the health of those guys? And today? by the way, the Browns have a really good defense. Yeah, they do. They, they do. do. They make Brock Purdy look pretty ordinary. Yeah, we need yesterday. to talk about this because this is the discussion going around right now in terms of Brock Purdy and whether he's elite or is he a very good quarterback or is he on a team that has a talent look good. that has talent everywhere and it's or is it a combination of all of it? Yeah, it's probably a little bit of everything, but I mean, I think he's a really good quarterback. Really good quarterback. I agree with that. He had a really tough game yesterday, but I mean, when you take now, like, I think next week, if though, let's just say I don't know that either guy will be ready to play next week, and I don't know. I was that's why I asked Scraby what the diagnosis. I have is not for heard these anything guys. yet, but, but I've also been preoccupied. But if he gets a whole week to prepare without those guys, yeah. I think you'll see a whole lot better performance uh, next week. I think they play Minnesota on Monday Night Football. First of all, Minnesota is not very good defensively. Secondly, he'll have a week to prepare without those guys. The perfect medicine. But when you, <laughs> yeah, when you when you lose two of your focal points on offense during the middle of a game, yeah, against a good defense on the road, and I think it's difficult for anybody to overcome that. I obviously, as a George Kittle fantasy football owner, I would have liked to see him at least look in his direction once once <laughs> those guys went out of the game, but he chose not to do that. Kept trying to force the ball to Ayuk. That was really the only guy he seemed to trust. He only had one completion until about the last couple of minutes of the second half. Yeah. You know what I want to and say about so, all this? You know, the 49ers, no. uh, <laughs> that's hard. That's hard. And Good I don't answer. really want to hear. I mean, I don't know. Go ahead. Start yeah, lining. Let's, let's see We've we got go. five minutes left. Go ahead. I'm sure you've got at least five minutes worth of excuses as to why they lost this no, game. No, Not the least of which is going to be the officiating. So there's going to be no excuses. I'm not going to say it was the officials because I can't use that excuse later in the year if the 49ers get beat by something. So I'm so not going to use that. So you're stashing it? Is that what you're I'm saying? You're stashing, stashing that yeah. excuse away? I will right. say yesterday on both sides, there are some terrible calls by the referees. That may have been, and I'm not being dramatic, one of the worst 
referee games I've ever seen. You're not the first the person I heard say that. So yeah, the Browns had 13 penalties for 119 yards. They called a face mask on the wrong team and then switched <laughs> it once they saw it on the big board or something. Oh, well, at least they there got was it right. 25 penalties total in the game, 12 on San Francisco, 13 on Cleveland. Don't that, even get me started is... about the end of the game too when he went and he didn't go helmet to helmet. Um, I can't remember the guy's name right now, but he went in with his shoulder, and that shouldn't have been a penalty. That was a huge play right there. It was third and something. All right, so you're not going to blame the officials, but you are going to blame the <laughs> I'm officials. No, I'm what, gonna else, blame, what else do you no, have to say? I'm going to blame the kicker, Jake Moody. If you're going to take a kicker in the third round of the NFL draft, he better be knocking them all down. You better be able to make a chip shot for the win, bro. And he missed one earlier in the game, too. So I put this loss on Jake Moody. All right. Well, I, I, I don't put it on Jake Moody. I put it on the fact that McCaffrey and Samuel uh, both went down with injury. I mean, McCaffrey was running wild early in the game. They had a 10 nothing lead. It was going to be a cruise for the 49ers until those injuries happened. But, uh, yeah, that's what we said last week. The 49ers, I mean, they look like a team that might go undefeated this year. And I think the first thing you said, Tony, was, yeah, well, let's see how healthy they stay. Yeah, this, this is that time of year where you they just gradually start getting nicked. Yeah, and every team is going through it. It's not just the 49ers. No, everybody's got something. The Eagles had their chance to uh, remain undefeated, wiped out by a really remarkably good performance by the New York Jets defense. I mean, time and again in that game, the Eagles got the ball in the second half and the fourth quarter, and all they needed was one more score really to put the game away. You knew Zach Wilson wasn't going to rally from nine or ten points down. Right. But uh, and, and time and again, the Eagles kept stopping the Jets getting the ball back to Jalen Hurts, and time and again the Jets kept stopping him. And that's not easy to do. Yeah. I, I I don't know what the – you know what the what is missing with Philadelphia, but Jalen Hurts runs around and makes just play after play after play. And all day yesterday, Tony, he was dropping back to pass. He was under pressure. He would escape the rush almost every single time and run to the sideline no and couldn't open. find Nobody anybody open. open. Yeah. I mean, the Jets just did an amazing job, and then they finally sealed it with the, those interceptions. I, I think what you saw in that game is is a reminder that no matter how good the quarterback is, when you consistently get pressure, and this applies to the best quarterbacks we've seen in the past 15 right. years, Brady, yeah. Mahomes, doesn't matter. If you put pressure on them consistently, they start to feel it even when there isn't pressure. And that is something that I think all teams – are striving to have in terms of having a front four that consistently yeah, put up pressure. Because then you can cover with seven. Because here's the thing. The Jets were down their two best corners in that game as well. They didn't even have them for the game. Yeah, And they still, because of that pressure they had all game long, they made Jalen Hurts look as though he wasn't a Super Bowl Type quarterback. Well, you can't be a Super Bowl quarterback if there's nobody to throw the ball to. Right. They co- he, they still covered up well. He couldn't find anybody open. The one thing I would suggest to the Eagles and Nick Sirianni as a as a Monday morning quarterback is when you've got a lead, run the football. Run the I football. mean, DeAndre Swift only had ten carries in this game. I realize he only you know managed eighteen yards. Jets are tough to run against. But I think you got to keep trying. I mean, uh, Kenneth Gainwell had two carries. Boston Scott had two. That's only 14 rushing attempts. They had uh, 53 passes. 45 were throws. Eight were runs by Hertz. That's a that's a bad bad I, ratio. If you're the Eagles and you're winning the game, I can understand if you were behind. But they they I, I would run the football. I don't know where Rashad Penny is. Maybe it's a little self-serving as a former Aztec to right. suggest that the Eagles hand him the ball once in a while and you activate him. You brought him on there. Might as but, well use you him. Know, you have him. I, I, the Eagles need to find a more consistent running game, you know, and that's what the Jets, I thought, exposed yesterday. You know what happens, Chris, and this happens also to even the best coaches. When you have a weapon like a Hurts yeah. or a Mahomes right. or a Brady, right. you, you, I think sometimes default to, you know what, I have this – unbelievable weapon i'm i'm gonna use as opposed to as opposed to doing what your coach instinct is which is to have a um a i don't want to say an even but you want to even those that run pass out a little bit more and i think sometimes even the best of coaches fall into we've seen it with andy Reid at times like just falls into a trap of this guy is so good 
I can I can continue to try to keep doing it this way. And then this, these losses are often the reminder they need. And then the following week, you'll see that run game present a little bit more, and it makes a difference. Yeah, we'll see if the uh, Eagles change things up. Next week, they play the Dolphins. So you get a 5-1 and one versus a 5-1. and one. Uh, The 49ers are 5-1. and one. The Chiefs are 5-1. and one. And welcome to the 5-1 and one club, the yeah. Lions, who looked yeah. uh, maybe as impressive as anybody yesterday with their victory over the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's been on used the road. for the Panthers, the Jaguars, and the Lions. It's a cat. It's a cat. <laughs> so, yeah, that uses for everybody. All right. Speaking of uh, an amazing performer, Jordan Alvarez just had another postseason home run. And that's odd. To lead off the bottom of the second inning. So the Astros are on the board. Texas still enjoys a 4 1 lead over Houston, bottom of the second, game two of the American League Championship Series. We are underway. It's Gwen and Chris. Happy Monday to you. Like we said, if you want to watch, the uh, show is now streaming at 97.3 The Fan SD on Twitter, on YouTube. Find our 97.3 The Fan channel and uh, follow along with us here as we roll till 4.30 on San Diego's number one sports talk station. That would also be 97.3 The Fan. Did you know that you can now listen to all your favorite teams, stations, shows, and even podcasts all on the Odyssey app? It's just nice to throw on at the gym. Download it now. Many of the successes you've had began with a great opportunity. Now, here's another one. Make your next career move with a degree from University of Maryland Global Campus. Choose from more than 125 degree and certificate programs featuring online and hybrid courses, faster onboarding, and no-cost digital resources in place of most textbooks. Get started on your undergraduate or graduate degree or certificate right here in San Diego. Learn more at umgc.edu. Howler Scream has resurfaced at SeaWorld San Diego and is taking horror to new depths with all new scares, coasters in the dark, and even lurking all around. <laughs> the terror is waiting to pull you in. Select night, September 29th through October 31st. Howler Scream at SeaWorld San Diego. Get tickets for as low as $41.99. Separately ticketed event. Restrictions apply. Golfers, swing into the Golf Mart for the hottest new fall arrivals from TaylorMade, Callaway, and Titleist. Come by and test drive the new TaylorMade P790 irons, the new Callaway Apex Pro iron sets, and the new Titleist T-Series irons. While you're there, get a free custom fitting on the new arrivals and more. The Golf Mart is your headquarters for all the latest golf gear from all the top manufacturers. The Golf Mart, home of the 90-day satisfaction Satisfaction guarantee. Shop us in store or online at thegolfmart.com. It's time for the fall haul at Northern Tool and Equipment. Get your hands on tough tools at prices that are tough to ignore. Got plans? Cancel them. Trucks in the shop? Borrow someone else's. Don't like saving money? Right. So head to the fall hall at Northern Tool. Stock up at the season's biggest event and get huge savings on brands like Milwaukee, Honda, and Ingersoll Rand. Shop at northerntool.com. We're made for this. Wendy's new breakfast two for $3 Biggie Bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best. Sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee. Or two savory sausage biscuits. Uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for $3 Biggie Bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. What's up, everybody? Tony Gwynn Jr. here. And listen, I know we've talked about QC Kinetics, but it, it truly is the future of joint pain relief. And it's right here in San Diego. This advanced regenerative medicine, this is amazing stuff. If you're like me and have been told you needed more steroids, more surgery, are your only options to get rid of some of these aches and pains that you have, not so fast. I think you should research on how you can harness your body's own healing agents to attack those very same aches and pains. It's really joint pain at the end of the day. And I'm talking lasting relief. A lot of these options, they just mask the pain. That's not what QC Kinetics does. These treatments go to the very root of your problem using concentrating healing properties placed directly in your joints. Call the local medical professionals and get a free consultation today. QC Kinetics with locations in Torrey Hills and Hillcrest. They are the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. 
Tune in to Smart Investing Show every Saturday morning at 8, right here on 97.3 The Fan. You will learn how to become a smarter investor and how to invest for the long term. If you miss a show, you can always listen to our podcast on smartinvesting2000.com. Stay right there because in just two minutes, we'll be back to Gwen and Chris fun on 97.3 The Fan. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20. So am I because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine. It can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. Gillette Intimate gives guys a gentle and easy shave on there. And around there. And even under there. Don't treat your groin like junk. Respect it with Gillette Intimate, the best a man can get. Buy now at a retailer near you. We're going abroad for the first time in years. To Spain. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Mostly sunny and breezy, highs mid-70s to mid-80s. Weather brought to you by Barbasol Shaving Cream. Choose Barbasol Shaving Cream for a thick lather and a close, comfortable shave. Barbasol, the American original for over 100 years. Better buy Barbasol. Two twenty-three on the clock. Tony Gwynn Jr., Chris Ello, Matt Scraby, Gwynn and Chris. Game one of the NLCS begins tonight. Zach Gallen, Zach's <laughs> going against uh, one another. Uh, the the another series in which um, bottom towards the bottom of the the seeds. Are in an NLC, uh, NLCS. Yeah, four versus six. Four Last versus year was six. five versus six. Yeah, so uh, should be a good series. I, I I got the Phillies winning this. I know the 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 Diamondbacks are playing some good baseball, but the Phillies they just playing in that building just yeah. seems like a very daunting yeah, big, task. Big home field advantage, yeah. and uh, the Texas Rangers don't care where they're playing. Jonah no. Heim, their catcher, just slugged a home run. I mean, Framber Valdez always pitches well in the playoffs, and he's not pitching well today. Texas now there, five to one over Houston in the top of the third. There may have been some signs of this too. The way he finished the season, he hasn't pitched that well through the postseason, or at least as well as we recall him pitching in the past postseason. So, well, uh, that has been a little bit of, uh, I would say, a soft spot for. The uh, Astros primetime NFL games are available free from Westwood one and live here on 97, three, the fan and on the Odyssey app tonight, listen to the Cowboys and the chargers and Thursday, the Jaguars and the saints right here on 97, three, the fan at four 30 or simply download the Odyssey app and search for 97, three, the fan at kickoff. Uh, Kim Ng, uh, the former, GM now of the Miami Marlins. Yeah, this caught uh, caught me by surprise. It caught a lot I of people by surprise. I wasn't expecting that. It was funny because uh, the Giants, San Francisco Giants, I know we're going to talk about it in the Big Five, but uh, they actually interviewed the first woman ever for uh, the manager, open manager yeah. position. My wife was asking me about it last night. Said, well, you know, why aren't they going to hire her? And I said, oh, maybe they will. And I said, you know, they've already hired a general manager, a woman first general manager, Kim Ng, and then the next day, Wake up and uh, she's out in yeah. Miami. Uh, according to uh, ESPN, Jeff Passan 
um, they tried to hire somebody over the top of her to basically where she would have to answer to yeah. a new head of baseball. And why ops. would they do that? Unless they're just a really lousy organization, which I believe I've heard Miami is. Ah, there in lies <laughs> the big detail that uh, often, that often spirals organization into the wrong places. Yeah. The right leadership at the top of the board. And, uh, Listen, you can't blame this on on Low on Lowry, who used to be the uh, the Jeff owner. Yeah, yeah, you can't, can't blame who sold him. the entire team after they won their second World Series. So but, he, uh, he's moved on from this now. So uh, this is a uh, new ownership, and I know from having talked to Skip, he enjoyed working with Kim Ng, and they, uh, she she was smart enough to hire him. Yeah, I mean that was her best. That was her stroke of genius. I mean. The Marlins did have a minus 57 run differential this year, which is the largest ever for any playoff team. But the Marlins also are not working from the same place as every other team in baseball. No. They don't have the kind of payroll. They don't have the kind of attendance. They don't have the kind of money coming in that uh, so many other their competitors do. I mean, they, they had to beat out the Mets in their own division. They beat them out. And then they had to knock off, what was it, five or six teams in the playoff yeah. run. They I had mean, to go on a, a nice run because they were at the bottom. I mean, they were right there with the Padres. It's a beautiful if not below. season for the Marlins. I mean, you think you'd reward Kimming. You would not yeah. say, hey, we're going to go ahead and put somebody above you. So, I mean, honestly, I think that's good on her for uh, saying, you know what? I, that's that's not going to work. I'm getting out of here, giving up a giving up a chance of a lifetime to make a make a point that I agree with. I I, I think that tells you a lot that. They had the success they did when nobody thought they would. I mean, they're probably they're, they very likely could have the manager of the year uh, when it's all said and done. Yeah. Um, and yet they still tried to hire someone above her, and so she has politely. I don't know if it was politely, but I'm gonna say politely <laughs> declined. She stormed into the <laughs> office and threw her folder against yeah. the wall and said, "I'm out of here." Yeah, no, I, I don't know exactly how it went, but I do know she will not return in the same yeah. position for the Marlins. Well, we'll see where there's that. There's somebody goes. really good you out better there. Better believe it. She's already for somebody else to hire. She's already rumored uh, with the Red Sox, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah, she's only 54 years old, and I mean, congrats to her for setting a great example. For women everywhere. I mean, don't don't think that all eyes weren't on her, you, you know, me? and then some yeah. throughout Major League Baseball. And if she struggles or, you know, finds the job to be, you know, overwhelming in any way, that's going to make it more difficult for any other woman to get an opportunity. Yeah, exactly. So, so. Uh, you know, she's, she's a great trailblazer, and, uh, you know, I'm sure she's going to get another chance. Absolutely. In other sports specifically here in San Diego, San Diego State Aztecs, preseason number 17. Number 17 for the team that was in the national championship <laughs> game last year. Here is your reward. We a get no respect. Coal. We yeah. get no respect. A lump of coal for Brian Dutcher. You know, they were ranked 19th to begin last season. So this isn't really any great thing for them to we, be celebrating. How, how often do we talk about how stupid preseason yeah. rankings are? Yeah, this is going to be uh, – this is, you know, look, uh, two of the teams they beat to get to the national championship game, Creighton and Florida Atlantic, are ranked ahead of them. Creighton is number eight. Florida Atlantic's number 10. Mm. Uh, Gonzaga's in there at 11. Arizona, 12. Uh, of course, you know, you don't even have to ask me who's first. You could probably guess Kansas. I mean, that's not, the – Not UConn. Uh, no, Kansas. Yeah, you're right. UConn's number six, although they got a couple of first place votes. Kansas got 46 first place votes. Everything I'm reading says UConn is going to be mm, as good as good again, as good this year. And they're yeah. six. So, well, they're, Kansas, they're uh, Kansas lost in the uh, opening weekend of the NCAA yes, tournament last year to uh, Eric Musselman and Arkansas, but it's Kansas and Duke at the top, and then uh, you know, on down the line. But the Aztecs. They're so used to this. They, they. It would be nice to give you a top 10. It would be nice to at least say you earned yourself a preseason top 10. What happens from there is 
doesn't really matter because it's going to be decided on the court anyway. anyway. Right, 100%. But I think they deserve the reward of a top 10 team to get to the national championship game. I agree. Slotting them in there at 17, which is where about they're always slotted. Two spots ahead of where they were last year. That's, the not, that's, that's a slap in the face, and I'm sure Brian Dutcher will use that to his advantage. Uh, on the football side, the Aztecs get a victory. I, I got to be honest, I did not see the game. But I did. 41-34. They made some huge plays on defense. Even though they gave up 34 points, yeah. sounds like their defense didn't play well. They blocked a punt. They had a pick six. Uh, they recovered a couple of fumbles deep in Hawaii territory. So their defense actually set up their offense. They made some things happen, it And then like. Jalen Maiden made a couple of big passes to uh, Makai Shaw. Uh, number 83, the wide receiver, had a good game. And it wasn't a Picasso. But uh, for the Aztecs, it often isn't to be two and four. They needed to get a win on the road, and uh, good for them they did. How'd the uh, how'd the wave do yesterday? I know you were out there. Uh, they uh, clinched the number one seed, and they uh, did. So they won the shield. Good for them. Uh, so All right, the shield for those who don't know, it's the the best record regular in the season league. championship. Regular and season now they champion. get the playoffs at home, and they'll get a bye. They'll move they're automatically in the semifinals. Right, um, and if they win that, the championship match is here. Yeah. That's in right. San so, Diego. So the wave is two home matches away from winning the uh, NWSL title. Good luck to uh, to them. Yeah. Shout out to the wave for they. Uh, well done. They hosted my family and I at the uh, game yesterday. My kids, as you guys know, play yeah. soccer. Love soccer. So was, and what goes along with hosting somebody at a game? Because Scraby well, and I normally <laughs> sit in the cheap seats where we can't see the. The field. only time I've been hosted anywhere was Lululemon last Thursday. Yeah, that Thursday, was a big deal so. for you. On I've been Thursday. thinking about that all weekend. I've been talking about it all weekend. So, <laughs> I mean, listen, Scraby, you're a big deal, man. I don't know if you know this. You every every, every time we go, whether it's to the Lululemon event or we go out to high schools, the person they want to talk to isn't me. They want to see you. It's not. It's, it's not. It's not Chris. It's Matt Scraby. And no. then they say and they don't know him as Matt Scraby. They just no. know him as Scraby. No, you know, uh, a neighbor was outside the other day and I had met him maybe like a year ago. And he uh, he was like, hey, tell those guys to be nice to you <laughs> from from down the, the block. Common, the co most common thing said to Chris and I. Yeah. I mean, whether we're with you or whether we're just out and about on our own. Let it be known that every time you yell that out, it falls on completely <laughs> deaf ears. <laughs> See, that's the problem. Tony and I are that's the problem. Because we know you. You're gaslighting no, yourself. No, we're not gaslighting. See, you can play that game of gaslighting because nobody gets to hear what happens when this mic goes off. You can tell them. Oh, I, I could, but the, the just you... angelic sounds happen when this mic turns <laughs> We'd rather off. get you back when we're on the air. <laughs> okay. Let's get to break. When we come back, G. B U good, bad, ugly on the way. Previously on the John Cantera show. I'm pulling so hard right now for the Texas Rangers because they got a bunch of good dudes. Boach, Chris Young, Nick Hundley, Will Venable. Doesn't get any better than those four guys, folks. They're they're marvelous people because they care about other people. They're not me, me, me type people. And to see Bruce Bochy back in the game makes me feel awful good. Listen to the John Cantera Show weekdays from 10 to 2 on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Bank of America is the proud employer of over 210,000 teammates who go above and beyond to support their clients' financial goals. Like Bruno, a Better Money Habits volunteer champion who helps debt feel less scary by giving clients tips and tools to tackle it little by little. For all your financial goals, we're here to listen and help. What would you like the power to do? Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash about. Bank of America NA, member FDIC, equal.
Yep, yep, the uh, program is now uh, streaming. Uh, we're doing it live on video as well. Go to at 97.3 The Fan SD on Twitter or go to the 97.3 The Fan YouTube page. You can catch the show that way. It is uh, Chris Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm the one with the receding hairline. But happy, to have, <laughs> wow. happy to still have some hair. I still am happy to have any hair, so I shouldn't complain. Tony Gwynn Jr., no he's hair the one well. sans hair. Yeah, I got lots of hair. And then scrape has got all the hair over I got there. hair in patches. Yeah. <laughs> like around the you sides. You haven't shaved basically. in a little while? Shaved the head in a while? Yeah, it's about a week. A week. A little less than all right. Man, yeah. there is some major growth going on. So yeah, you, can tell, uh, you can tell us all by our hairlines. Uh, welcome back to the program. <laughs> 239 is the time. Texas Rangers continue to lead the Houston Astros 5-1. Astros batting in the bottom of the third inning. Texas took game one last night by a score of 2-0. Uh, Heim has homered in this game for Texas. Your Dan Alvarez has accounted for the Astros' run. More baseball tonight. Arizona and Philadelphia. The Diamondbacks and Phillies, a National League Championship Series that not many people predicted will get underway with game one and a battle of Zachs. Zach Gallen and Zach Wheeler should be a pretty good matchup. They uh, start at a little after 5 o'clock this evening. Meanwhile, week number six of the National Football League season wraps up tonight with Monday Night Football. The uh, Los Angeles, I still, in the very back, back portion of my twisted mind, thought San Diego Chargers. I mean, I need to say, how many years has it now been since they've honestly been gone? I wasn't working here. I, I don't remember. I was at a different station. So what like year did 16, they actually no. leave? Would it be eighteen? I don't know. I, you know, I have the internet next to me. Let me let me yeah, look. Yeah, that, that is to, that's your disposal there. So yeah, you should I mean, uh, check that out. Uh, it is now officially. I actually don't been have two sixteen till the end of the twenty sixteen season. Okay. So so this is seven or eight years that they've been in Los Angeles. <laughs> Incredible. I don't uh, have that anymore. I've I've, I've they played in Carson it. for several years. Yes, yeah. the Carson Chargers. <laughs> but now they're uh, they're in Los Angeles. That, that actually is a, a Pop Warner team out there. That's Carson about what Chargers. that's what they deserve to be called. Uh, Chargers <laughs> will take on the Dallas Cowboys. Monday Night Football will wrap up Week Number Six of the NFL. There are no undefeated teams left after some upsets yesterday. Let's review everything that took place in the NFL this weekend. It is the good, the bad. And the ugly. And, th you know, there wasn't really a lot of spectacular offensive performances yesterday in the NFL. As a matter of fact, only two teams all weekend long scored over 30 points. That's very rare. That is. In this day and age of the NFL, Jacksonville scored 37. And the Miami Dolphins, they got 42. So the 2023 Dolphins can celebrate. And Tyreek Hill, he knew how to just do that. Third down and six for Miami at the two-minute mark of the second quarter. Back to throw to a looking. Fire shoots on the right side. He's got Tyreek. Touchdown, Miami. To a Tyreek kill from Tua Tagovailoa. Whoa. That's his own team. <laughs> his own broadcaster can't even pronounce his name right. Vialoa. It's not Vialoa. It's Vialoa. Syllable in that bad boy. Wow! I feel, Can we I, run that back? Yeah, at first I, he sounds asleep <laughs> until he until he's not. Third down and six for Miami at the two minute mark of the second quarter. Back to throw to a looking fire shoot on the right side. He's got Tyreek touchdown Miami. To a Tyreek kill from Tua Tagovailoa. That that's one of the worst wow. pronunciations I've ever heard. That is wow. Hey, you know what's dangerous about his last name? As you hear somebody mess it up once, it's very easy to start repeating the mess up. Start blowing it up. <laughs> yeah, well, Tyree Kill, they can pronounce his name. He uh, will get fined for his celebration. I don't know if you guys what saw it. What did he it. do? Again? He grabbed a, oh, uh, yes. he grabbed a uh, phone and oh, yeah, videoed himself doing a flip. He's definitely going to get fined. And that's a <laughs> – thank you, Coach. 
Uh, the video of that got around uh, the uh, 2023 Dolphins continue to put up huge numbers against bad defenses, 42 to 21 over Carolina. And I as I say, said, it's very self-serving that you put the Dolphins first in this category. But yeah, okay. but you know what? They every time I do that, every time I put this together, Scraby thinks it's all about him. Yeah. No, I don't not. care about where the 49ers I'm, I'm, are at. I, I, I can't wait till we get you to You don't ugly. care about where the 49ers are at? No, because the, the, the Miami Dolphins beat a terrible football team. That's, that's that's not that's not like the best thing of the weekend. Sorry. All right, maybe the Detroit Lions were. How about I, that? The I, Lions I will take get that. to the five and one group as Jared Goff <laughs> blows out the Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. There's the shotgun snap. Goff back, looking, looking, throwing deep downfield. Watch Jamison inside the ten. Jamison yes! makes the catch. Yes! Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Yes! That's what I'm talking yes. about. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that call. That was a beautiful catch by uh, Jameson Williams. Williams. He uh, had the ball coming over the top of his helmet, which is so difficult to find. He had to twist and turn and get himself in position to make that catch in the right front corner of the end zone. It was a beautiful play. Uh, Goff went up and down the field all day long. Detroit only scored 20, but they were in complete control. Again, if, if as long as they stay healthy – this team is for real. Their defense is actually really good. It's pretty good. Yeah. The uh, kneecap Campbell's got himself a team. They'll <laughs> chess, they'll get tested by Baltimore this upcoming week. But right yes, now the will. Lions are five and one, along with uh, the four other teams that are in that same situation now in the NFL. Niners, Eagles, Dolphins, and Chiefs. 20 to 6, Detroit. Uh, also landing in the good category, the New York football Jets. We talked about it already. Their defense was really spectacular as they uh, continued to turn away Jalen Hurts and finally set up a winning touchdown run by Brees Hall. Brees Hall, the eye back. Hand off Hall up the middle. They're going to let him score. And he's into the end zone for a Jet touchdown. What would you guys think of that? The Eagles uh, down. The, Eagle, the Jets could have run out the clock and kicked the field goal and won the game 15-14. to 14. But the Eagles let him score so that they would get the ball back with a minute to play. I think it's I a, hate to say that's it's like the a, strategy now. At, that's just not a bad move anymore. At, at this point, because offenses are so prolific, yeah, you, 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 need as, you know you need as much time as possible to get down the field. Um, as you said, they could have just ran the clock out and they don't even get the ball back. So it, it's – it's the right strategy. It seems weird letting somebody score, but yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, the Jets' offense continues to be, uh, shall we say, a work in progress. Uh, barely 250 total yards for the Jets yesterday, but enough because their defense intercepted Hurts three times and hand the Eagles their first loss of the season. They also have um, one of the best people of all time in their midst, which is Aaron Rodgers. And in the Big Five, I'm going to tell you why he's one of the best people of all time. I, you've been telling us that for years. I have not, not been telling you. No, I, no, I have not been telling you that. All right, into the bad category we go, and uh, the Denver Broncos on Thursday Night Football showed their stuff to a national television audience, or at least those who could find it at, find the game streaming, and uh, they came up with absolutely nothing against the Kansas City Chiefs, who won nineteen to eight. Is it possible for Russell Wilson to look any worse, guys? And Sean Payton. I mean, he's getting paid a lot of money to be one and five. I am convinced that you need good coaching in the NFL, no matter who you are. Mm. Uh, just think about it. Like Tom Brady, he had good coaches no matter where he went. Um, Patrick Mahomes has had one coach, one of the best coaches. I mean, you need good coaching. And right now, it just seems like, Denver is in a bad spot. And maybe they are purposely racing towards the bottom to get Mr. Williams out of USC, but I'm just saying this is this is this was bad. And their defense actually didn't look like Swiss cheese. No, they only <laughs> gave the Chiefs one touchdown the entire game. But Russell Wilson threw for 95 yards. 95. Those are high school numbers. Uh Kansas City 19, Come Denver on, 8. If it's possible to look any worse than Russell Wilson, your name could be Mac Jones. Yowzers. He turned in another pathetic performance yesterday <laughs> pathetic in Las Vegas. performance. <laughs> throwing the ball 
his interceptions are, are just like they're starting to look worse and worse every worse week. Worse and worse, yeah. right? They just it's like they pop up in the air and just land right in the bread basket of opposing defenders. <laughs> it does seem like everything is going against him. It really does. It's bad. <laughs> Las Vegas took advantage, and uh, the Raiders. Raiders. To the Raiders. <laughs> Garoppolo looking over the middle, fires to the end zone, and it's caught. Touchdown, Raiders! Jacoby Myers. Eight yards in the back of the end zone, wide open. I miss uh, Jackpot, baby. Where's Brent Mushberger? He's no longer doing that, I guess. Huh? I don't know, actually. I just I thought, just about, thought that. about it, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't even realize that. Uh, Garoppolo. Yeah, I'm uh, just happy your favorite head coach got uh, another victory, man. Josh yeah. McDaniels. Yeah, He's yeah. Winning outcoached, that guy. outcoached his... Uh, his uh, his uh, peer, uh, Bill Belichick, the guy who brought the him sensei. along. Uh, <laughs> Garoppolo, 162 yards and left the game and went to the hospital. And Why did he go to the hospital, Scraby? Uh, I believe he had a back Because he was issue. hurt. Why? Scraby, I don't know Scraby's why. dog and Garoppolo no, now. You just I never did that. Yes, oh, you are. yes, you In the did. break, I said... In the break, I said, Jimmy G, going to the hospital. Yeah, okay. yeah, he's always hurt. Uh, that's what it sounds like. That's what, exactly what it sounded like. But yeah. Dog and Jimmy again. But this was like your best guy when he had a Niner uniform yeah, on. Yeah, because I wanted to support him. But uh, now, now that you, he's not a 49er, don't I don't need him. to to go out in the limbs that I do for him. All right. Uh, Raider, <laughs> Raiders are 3-3. Three and three, Patriots are 1-5. and five. Uh, Another battle of 1-4 and four teams in Chicago yesterday. And once Justin Fields went out of this game, the Bears were really in trouble against the Vikings, and so much so that even the Vikings' defense scored to make the difference in this game. Kirk Cousins all through, also threw this touchdown. Five-step drop, steps up, fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings! Jordan Addison with his fourth receiving touchdown this season, has given Minnesota a 12-6 lead. Yeah, we got to find out who Tyson Badgent is. Never heard of him. Yeah, nor have I, nor have too many Bears fans. He took over for the injured Justin Fields yesterday. It is Chicago that falls to 1-5. and five. All right, we go to Ugly, and there's no question we have to start with the 49ers here. Uh, rash of penalties in Cleveland, 12 of them. Cleveland made 13. But uh, the injuries give uh, Scraby and all the Niner apologists plenty of excuses. This field goal put the Browns ahead late in the fourth quarter. From the far side hash, Bohorquez kneels at the 19. Here's the snap. Puts it down. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Wow. That was very matter of fact. <laughs> good. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that we didn't talk about earlier that the 49ers do have to ex do some explaining for they lost to PJ Walker, and uh, don't even get me started. And Jerome Ford, Good old and PJ. a whole bunch of backups on Cleveland. So, who was PJ hey, Walker? Was he with Baltimore? Where was he at? Uh, Carolina. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. PJ Walker is, is not a bad quarterback, I but he's see. not a starting quarterback in the NFL. Yesterday, I just kept screaming at the TV, "You're losing to PJ <laughs> Walker!" Like, I, I feel like the 49ers read their own press clippings this week because. They anointed them Super Bowl champions all week, and it, or their two best players got hurt. That, but uh, another thing that's been talked about all week is Christian McCaffrey. Or last week was Christian McCaffrey being targeted by other players, and that couldn't have been like. I think it was the first quarter he was going out of bounds, and the guy like threw him into the bench. Yeah, hit his knee. I it's don't football. Yeah, but they are targeting Christian oh, McCaffrey. Listen, he's just too the good. The dude is running up and down the. <laughs> this dude now is... this guy doesn't want his players to be tackled. <laughs> no, I didn't oh, say that. You, you this dude is throwing the guy out this of bounds dude is onto running, the bench. First of all, this dude is running up and down the field as he pleases. The one time you can get a good lick on him on the sideline. Have at it, but that's not a play anymore. Plays, you don't oh, hit people as out long, of bounds as long as he's not out of bounds when he gets hit. It's all fair in love, man. My, the last thing I will complain about is that Debo Samuel talks so much trash all the time. You know and what? He's always hurt. Chris, you know what pisses me off about the 49ers? They get into these little scuffles, and they know they have the ace in, in, in the deck with Trent Williams coming in and just cleaning up all messes. <laughs> I mean, there was a scrum, and Debo is headbutting dudes with his helmet. I mean, they all had their helmets on. And all of a sudden, you see Trent Williams coming in, like, the whole screen, like, clear out. You can see the five guys that didn't want any smoke. They yep. just backed up. Yep, yep. And the one poor guy who got his helmet, like, 
such whiplash. His helmet came off. <laughs> there's like, there's, there's, you can't act cool after that. Like after Trent Williams comes over, all fun and games are, are done. He it's is over. such a big human being. <laughs> he just came, and the sad part is when he came in, he didn't even push anybody as hard as he could. He was just like a half push. It's crazy. And my man's neck almost snapped. He he does have the the 49ers do have the ultimate like they do. look at us. Card. Every time they could they could start any type of scrum they want because Trent Williams can come in and just clear it all out. Just clear it out. Although I, I did see I did see my man uh Garrett on the end. I mean throw oh, Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett throw Trent Williams to the ground on one specific uh, specific play, and I was like, okay, this dude is Miles Garrett's for real. He's pretty strong. Yeah, he's he strong. Brock Purdy, uh, twelve of twenty seven. This is a guy that had hardly any incompletions before this game. Also threw his first pick of the year. Nineteen seventeen, Cleveland upsets the 49ers. Speaking of uh, of melees, the uh, Giants Bills game featured multiple melees last night. Oh yeah, it did and yeah. Uh, it was kind of an ugly game. The Bills did just enough. To win this game, got away with a hold at the end. I know that. Yeah, here's that hold, and let's see if it was called by the announcer because it wasn't called by the official. Here's the snap. Fakes the handoff, throws it into the end zone. It's incomplete. Intended for Darren Waller. Taron Johnson in coverage caused enough disruption to force the incompletion. The game is over, and the Bills escape. With a 14 to 9 victory. If by interrupt, he meant grab the whole right side so that Waller couldn't get his other hand up, though he, he had it accurate. Then. Yeah. I, w- I would say that if the. <laughs> Did he? Did he? I would say that if the officials in the 49er game were working that game, it would have been called. It would be. Because they called they everything, everything in that 49er game. They were calling. Never mind. I'm done. Yeah, you said you had no more complaints. You sure I, did. I don't, you're right. I'm almost sure. We already don't want you guys tackled. So what else? What else you got? That wraps up a week. Uh, we don't have a third ugly. The other ugly was the fact that 21 of the 28 teams this week did not score 20 points. Too soon to say uh, defenses are starting to adjust. I just think it was a weird week in the NFL. That's very rare to have three quarters of the team held under three touchdowns, but. Defenses did uh, finally fight back this weekend in the NFL. Alex Bregman just hit a solo home run for the Astros. They continue to trail Texas. It's 5-2, bottom of the fourth. Back with the Daily Gambit next.
Go Redskins! It's time to get you up to speed on all things sports. Yes! 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 With plenty of nonsense in between. Oh, look! Here comes our fearless producer! Gwen and Chris starts right now on 97.3 The Fan. Into the 3 o'clock hour, we roll. Tony Gwynn Jr., Chris Ello, Matt Scravey. Hello, Gwen and Chris. You don't need a magic spell to make this Halloween stress-free and fun. Pick up Halloween in one trip at Smart and Final and use promo code 3FREE. The number 3, then free, all one word, for free delivery on your next three orders of $45 or more. Um, before we move to the daily game, I want to share some sad uh, tragic news. Uh, scary it, news. It's really scary news um, in the world of soccer. Uh, the Belgium-Sweden Euro qualifier was abandoned at halftime after uh, two Sweden fans in uh, Sweden, Swedish, Sweden jerseys uh, were shot dead uh, in Brussels early Monday. Um, they have abandoned that game. Uh, the, the UEFA Euro um, released a statement saying the following Following a suspected terrorist attack in Brussels this evening, it has been decided after consultation that with to the two teams and the local police authorities that the Euro, that the UEFA Euro 2025 2024 qualifying match between Belgium and Sweden is abandoned. Um, so, I just now were these uh, were these fans at the game or did this happen outside the stadium? I'm trying to I'm trying to. Efforting to find that information in the story, and I'm yeah, not I'm not seeing, seeing it, it either. You know, with what's going on in the world right now, this kind of stuff is very scary. And uh, you'd sure like to believe that sports could be a safe haven to get away from the craziness, but not all the time. Not all the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, you know, two Sweden fans get shot. I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't even want to. I can't even imagine the horror, you know, that is going on around this world right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we feel a little safe in our in our comfortable cocoon here across the world, uh, halfway around the world. But maybe we shouldn't feel so safe. I mean, it's just you don't know what's going to happen the, anymore. The shooting was about three miles away okay. from uh, where the match okay. was being Thank played. So. Yeah, I didn't see that. Uh, so... Yeah, we just, we just hope we just we got to figure out a way to do better uh, yeah. with one another because there's a lot of a lot of hatred going on, and it and I mean it just seems like it's ramping up right now. So let's get back to some sports. We'll do uh, let's hop into the daily gamut. Do you like money? I think about money a lot. Do you like money without doing anything? Uh, duh, winning. Do you want to make money while watching sports? I think Washington is immortal luck. Washington! Woohoo! If you answered yes, this is your segment. Just don't blame us when you lose. Nothing is ever your fault. It's your game. Take it. Gwen and Chris go through the top bets of the day in The Daily Gambit on 97.3 The Fan. So before we get into it, I looked up on the screen. We got, you know, finally we have some sports on the TVs here. Um, they're pre-gaming the Charger. Um, who are they playing today? Cowboys? Yeah, I believe Charger so. Charger Cowboys yeah. game. I believe so. <laughs> uh, RG3 has worn the same suit. He is for right. the past three weeks. I don't know that I've ever. So he is making a decision that the the hot pink suit is going to be a staple week in and week out. That's a strong move right there. Must say strong and as in good. I, I don't. That depends on who you are. I, okay. It's not, um, I couldn't. I'm not going to try to wear a hot pink suit, but he, <laughs> he looks good in it. I will say that. But you just normally you see guys switch it up. He, he's it's three weeks in a row. It's great, right? We've seen him. Yeah. Up there. No, yeah. it definitely is. So there's that. All right, data gamut. Uh, Daily Gambit's our daily sports betting segment here on Gwen and Chris. I'm going to now have to find a bet whether or not RG3 is going to wear, wear the whole season for the fourth <laughs> time in a row next week. Um, let's start, though. Everybody gamble responsibly. And then we will start with recapping the bets that we did last week. And San Diego State, six-point favorite against Hawaii. You guys chose the Warriors. I chose the Aztecs, and I barely pulled it out, but I did. Aztecs won 41-34, so by Pretty seven. Good. 
Yeah. Reverse psychology work, baby. That's oh, right. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was the plan. <laughs> yes. Michigan and it Indiana. It cost me money, but it was well worth it. <laughs> Michigan, a 33-point favorite in this one. You guys chose Michigan. I chose Indiana, and Michigan won by a lot more than 33 points. They won by 45 with a final score of 52-7. to 0-2 oh, to start the week. No, you got that one. You got that one. You had Michigan. They, they oh, won okay. by 45. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, to get that. Georgia and Vanderbilt. We all chose Georgia on this one. Georgia was a 32 and a half point favorite. Georgia won, but they only won by 17, 37 to 20. So we lose that one. And they yet they continue to just be runaway number one team in the country, even though they can only beat Vanderbilt by two touchdowns. I watched a little bit of that game. What'd you got? What's your, break, what's your breakdown? Georgia does not seem like a national championship team to me right now. Why? Because they, they made when you when you were watching the team last year, you it was obvious it was obvious. It was year. obvious yeah. that you could just throw it over the top, you could do whatever you wanted, but there were a few plays where the, it was like, Oh, see, can't people do that. are catching up to <laughs> can't them. Can't do now. that anymore. They're too right. young. Uh and then we bet on Penn State. If and Vanderbilt UMass. scores 20 points against you, you should not be allowed to be the number one team in the country. <laughs> just because it's Vanderbilt. <laughs> just sorry. like just like Tony shouldn't have won Chris's Fantabulous Sports Game Show when he said Hungary as his hey, final. Hey, one. hey. I had it. Hey, I had it hey, right. Hey, hey. Uh, Penn State and UMass. Phonetically, that's how it would have been. You're right. Been said. You're right. Penn State, 42 point favorite in this one at home. By the way, 105,000 people showed up to this one, and it was a blowout. All of us chose UMass, and it didn't happen. 63 to nothing was Penn State winning over UMass. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> last, last one was the Giants and the Bills last night. Bills were home. They were 15 fo- po- point, point favorites in this game. We all chose the Bills. We all lose because the Bills only won by five. I'm not convinced that that team likes each other. Why? Buffalo? I, yeah, that's the only reason I can see them not playing What very makes you well. think they don't like each other? Because Stephon Diggs is usually always complaining about something. Josh Allen on the sideline looks uninspired. Did he, he look- was Stephon Diggs complaining about something in yesterday's game? I didn't. I, I, I'm not talking about last night. Oh, you're just saying. I'm in just general. saying in general. Josh Allen goes over to the bench. He kind of looks flustered or befuddled. Well, and- he's flustered because they're not playing well. I mean, Buffalo against Miami looked like a Super Bowl champion team. Yes, they did. But when you go back and you know remember how they played against Cincinnati in that playoff last year. You look at how they played last night and the week before in Jacksonville. Now, maybe it's part of the excuse is traveling back from Europe. I mean, that that sounds like it could have something to do with it. But the Giants are not a good football team. And they they shut out the Bills in the first half of that game. And uh, there's, something, are- there's something amiss with Buffalo because there's no way a team should look as good as they look some weeks and as bad as they do other weeks. Dable, I agree with you. Dable is uh, he yelling at a quarterback every week now. I mean, yes, yes, and he had good reason to to go off on Tyrod Taylor for trying to audible out of that play into a running play. Oh, I was going to say that probably cost them the game. It, it, it might have in the first yeah. half. They could have they could have done something other than what they did. I thought. Uh, I thought. Excuse me, Chris Collinsworth explained that pretty well. In today's NFL, you get two plays: a run play. And a pass play. Yeah, but why would you even give them the option of a run play? Well, that's the problem. And I think you probably shouldn't in that case. You take the, the one play, and if he does, you don't like what you see when you snap it, just throw that bad boy through the door. Give me, give me two pass plays. <laughs> right. Don't yeah. give me a run play to opt in two. Yeah. That, yeah. that was a bad, bad coaching by the Giants. It cost them. For uh, sure. Now to the best for tonight. I have two parlays that I have made, no. and the first one is going to be an all Dallas Cowboy parlay, and it's plus two fifty. I've kept these ones down, you know, lower payout because I want one to actually hit. <laughs> Tony Pollard, anytime touchdown score, please, Tony Pollard, do something. And then CD Lamb over seventy two and a half receiving yards. Also, CD Lamb over five and a half catches. I feel like. They're going to have to get C.D. Lamb involved if they want to get well, They haven't through the first six games no, or five games, no, whatever it's been. No. He has been non-existent for the he most part. He has been non-existent. And I need him to be non-existent today since I'm playing against him. I was listening to an NFL podcast driving down here, and they were saying, please, Cowboys, can you play a real game instead of these either you're getting blown out games or you're blowing out the other team games? We haven't really been able to see And you know that. what's funny? When they've blown out the other team, it's been the defense that's lar- largely leading the blowout. Like, they yeah. haven't had a big offensive oh, no. day 
at all. No, you're right. It has been the defense, like pick sixing and fumble yeah. sixing, all that good stuff. Fumble sixing. Yeah, I don't know. Is, is there another <laughs> is that, way to describe is that it? New, I don't think I've ever heard of fumble sixing. Chris, have you ever heard of fumble six? Um, no, but I've re- I've used it a couple of oh, times. Okay. There you all go. Right. We haven't used rock in a while, which stands for zero. There hasn't anyway. been very many zeros thrown up. So. No. All right. Uh, then the second parlay plus 268, and it's going to be over 50 total points in the game tonight between the Chargers and the Cowboys. Austin Eckler coming back from injury. I feel like they're going to give him a touchdown. So anytime touchdown. And then Dak Prescott over 258 and a half passing yards. So over 50 total points. Austin Eckler touchdown. Dak Prescott over 258 and a half. I think that one's going to happen. All right. You'll find a way to blow both of those. It probably will be the score in that one. It's yeah. going to be a low scoring game tonight. Or we something. just know that you're not getting it. I know That's that. your prediction? Yeah. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, here we go with some uh, bets for tonight. We'll start in the National Hockey League. Our guy, Connor Bedard, and the Blackhawks are in Toronto against the Maple Leafs. Toronto has scored 13 goals in their first two games combined. Mm. They've allowed nine. So their first two games, 22 goals have been put up in those two games. Tonight they play the Blackhawks. The over-under is only seven for this game. Uh, Tony, with that information, what would you like to do? Over or under seven total goals? Mm, Over. Over. Toronto's uh, Austin Matthews, by the way, just the fifth player in NHL history to record a hat trick in each of his first two games. So he's off to a good start this year. Bedard, for his uh, part, has scored a point in each of his three uh, first three NHL games. Uh, all right, uh, it's I'll getting go, more comfortable. After all that, I'll go over to Toronto's going to win like seven to one. I think Toronto's much better. Chicago, Toronto, seven goals. Scraby, you said the Maple Leafs. If when you're talking about them in a, uh, oh, a, 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 a plural sense, would it be the Maple Leaves? Okay, just go ahead there. I'm just uh, I'm, I'm being serious. Go like, ahead, Mr. Scraby. Uh, I'm going to go with over <laughs> as well. But I believe it would be Chris, Maple he's, try, he's trying you right now, Chris. He's trying. He's trying my patience. He's trying I, you, This man. is the name of the team. I, I don't know what you know where you're at on maple this. Maple leaves. Because there's more than one Shut maple leaf. <laughs> Now see, everybody can, now everybody see, can see on the cameras how mad see, these guys get. How frustrated we get and why it is that we blast him on the air. It's because a that little, is a legit little question. pokes and shows like this. Those are, you're so true. I though. wasn't poking, Chris. Yes, you were. I was just saying the maple leaves makes more sense than the maple leaves. You should have seen your face when he said maple, maple leaf. Maple leaf. You were like, you're like face lit up. Like, I was like, wait, wait, wait. It's the maple leaves. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. Yeah, that's over. That's uh, really ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, let's uh, pick a bad player for tonight's Monday Night Football game. How about Brandon Cooks? Over oh, under oh, 37 and a half yards. Oh, well, this is fun. For Brandon Cooks. He has been missing in action for the Dallas Cowboys so far. Rushing and receiving. Oh, rushing and receiving changes well, he nothing for me. I don't think he doesn't rush very <laughs> I don't think often. he's going to get an attempt. He tonight. used to get a lot of rushes when he was with the Rams. They used to run that little tight end around play. And he gained a lot of yardage. I, I, I'm going to say under until he does something. I mean, he's only got to basically catch one pass to go over because they just throw deep to him. But I say he won't do it. Say under. Scraby? Under. Also, not any faith in Brandon Cooks. Tony? I'm going over, baby. You're going to take on, a Brandon. shot on Brandon Cooks to. Show up tonight. Do something. Uh, all right, uh, let's go. You took all my bets in your uh, in your uh, parlays, so that's why I'm kind of hemming and hawing. It's okay. We can bit. we can move on and no, I got one more. Oh, I got okay. one more. Right. Pitcher uh, Zach Wheeler tonight over under sixteen and a half outs. Mm. So all he has to do is get an out in the sixth inning. And he's been he's been dying money in the playoffs, the but the Diamondbacks have been hitting everybody. Uh, I'm going to say it's Gravy's turn. I will go over because he has money in the playoffs. Yeah, Tony? This, I don't, this ain't the matchup the Diamondbacks won. I'm going over. Over. I'm going uh, to actually spell that. And, over. And, over. The, <laughs> and the fact that the Diamondbacks are rusty, that seems like an easy one for Zach Wheeler to get pitch into the sixth inning and get an, at least one out in the sixth inning. Why are they rusty? They've been waiting because oh, baseball yeah. gave them four days off after they clinched their series over the Dodgers. Your pet peeve. 
It is a pet peeve. I don't understand it. I, I, I don't have a problem with the delay for the wild card playoffs because I don't know what baseball is supposed to do. I mean, they've got to play the wild card game, so those champion teams have to sit out a few days. But once that has happened, I don't think baseball should just arbitrarily put off days into the playoffs. So, yeah, it's not baseball in my regard. All right, there you go with our daily gambit. We'll see how our picks turn out tomorrow. Last week, all three of us tied with the same record of 10 and 11. Nothing to be too excited about. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's get to break. When we come back, more football. Go some through the week five injuries. We'll also talk a little bit about Aaron Rodgers. He's throwing a football. Many think he may make his way back to the field before the season ends. I am not one. We will talk about it when we return. Here's some traffic. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly.
All right, first stressful moment uh, in the playoffs, I think, for Bruce Bochy. Rangers have uh, rolled through their first six games, rolled out to a 5-2 lead here in game two against the Astros, but finally a big threat by Houston. Bases loaded, nobody out. Bottom of the fifth inning, Nathan Avaldi gets punchy, punchy, and a ground out by Alex Bregman to get out of the run, the get good, out of the uh, inning. The no good, runs. The good old empty at bats. The punchy, otherwise known as a strikeout. That's yeah. um, from Mark Grant, <laughs> who I saw the other night at your uh, Lululemon event. Uh, welcome back to Gwen and Chris. 323 is the time. Texas continues to lead Houston. It is 5-2. Now they're going to the top of the sixth inning. Uh, speaking of scary incidents, we had one last night again in the Buffalo New York Giant football game. No more Buffalo night games. Yeah, Buffalo at night, and uh, we have a guy lying on the turf and not moving a whole lot, and a whole bunch of people crowded around him, and a lot of medical personnel and his teammates out there as well, and an ambulance on the field, and TV going to one commercial break and then going to a second commercial break. Yeah, man. It's and scary. all of us sitting at home wondering, okay, what's going on? Uh, this is on the heels of last year's event with DeMar Hamlin. DeMar Hamlin, absolutely. Uh, this time, though, it turned out to not be anything too serious. Uh, Buffalo Bills running back Damian Harris was released from a Buffalo area hospital today. He is resting at home. Sean McDermott, the coach of the Bills, says he's in good spirits, as uh, well as can be expected. He has a neck sprain, and he's in the league's concussion protocol. Uh, Harris was on the on the field for, they say, several minutes here. I mean, it was longer than several minutes. Yeah, it was a I mean, long time. It was time. like 15, 20 minutes while he was on the on the turf, and uh, the athletic trainers and the personnel uh, came out and tended to him. The entire Bill sideline came out, and you're right, with the DeMar Hamlin thing still fresh in our mind, this was very scary. But uh, Harris, the 26-year-old Buffalo running back, is apparently going to be okay. Uh, McDermott finished by saying, I think he's just extremely grateful to God for uh, him being in the situation that he's in as opposed to what he was several hours ago on that field. So scary moment. Uh, Josh Allen left the game last night for a brief time with a right shoulder injury. McDermott says he's going to be all right, but his day to day, some other NFL notes from week six action, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, who uh, Scraby thought is kind of uh, kind of weak and wimpy for going to the hospital. I, I yes, never he did. Said that. yes, he, he did. never said you that. Did too. You insinuated that. I mean, you're such a – you love to revision nice history out there. I love uh, to revision nice history, Yeah, too. I know. That's not the way I should have <laughs> said it. I could have said it a lot I, more mean. You I knew to, it was coming. Yeah. Uh, Garoppolo, uh, they feared an internal injury. That's why they sent him to the hospital for ho for scans. I, I can't believe what a wuss he was for actually accepting <laughs> that diagnosis and going to the hospital. But uh, he did not return to the game. Josh McDaniels today saying that uh, he's still undergoing some tests today, but all seems to be good with Jimmy Garoppolo. So good happy, for Jimmy G. Happy to hear that. Are um, you straight? Yeah. Yeah. Brian but, Hoyer, though, cannot be a quarterback every single week for that team or else they're going to lose. Is Brian Most Hoyer teams' back of quarterbacks replace, aren't yeah, very Garoppolo? good. I believe he replaced Garoppolo. Wow. Yeah, Brian Hoyer came in there. I didn't realize he was still in the yeah, league. Yeah, well, it was Aiden O'Connell uh, in the game against the Chargers yeah. a couple of weeks ago, but McDaniels did not go to him. I don't think the Raiders even gained a yard after Garoppolo <laughs> left the game yesterday, but fortunately they were facing uh, Mac Jones and the Patriots could not come back. Uh, Lions running back David Montgomery will be likely out for, quote, a little bit. <sighs> Uh, he's got a rib cartilage injury. Injury. Who's doing having a good season? So what far a too. wuss he is sitting out for rib cartilage issues. It's just cartilage. I mean, come on, it's not even a muscle. It's only <laughs> cartilage. No, ribs uh, are pretty bad, especially for a running back. Uh, Montgomery was injured uh, midway through the second quarter yesterday. I don't believe he. Uh, yeah, he did not return to the game no, at all. No. So uh, Jameer Gibbs has missed the last two weeks with a hamstring injury. Ryan and uh, Craig Reynolds, rather, is going, and Ryan Reynolds is the actor, but uh, it's Craig Reynolds who's taken over as running back for the five and one Lions. Uh, Dan Campbell said uh, he'll probably continue to do that because 
Doesn't look like Montgomery is going to be coming back anytime soon. And uh, then uh, let's see the 49er injury report here, Scraby. It's uh, long and lengthy. Debo Samuel with the shoulder injury day to day. Mm, that's Running better back than I thought. Christian McCaffrey with an oblique MRI coming. Oblique means he is a wuss, according to Scraby. That is an injury that Scraby just cannot stand. He doesn't. He doesn't in get baseball. It. He, he doesn't understand wait, how. Why? In ba- what difference does it make? Baseball is the only sport where someone can miss an entire season for a well, oblique I mean, strain. That, the, the oblique is pretty involved in the whole swinging motion and i'm just saying it's directly involved yeah so i'm just saying maybe it's it's a little worse in baseball than it is in other sports i know uh, i've dug myself a hole with these just injuries saying. just saying and i'm gonna stick to them all right uh trent williams also was injured oh, in that game yesterday with the right he's ankle fine. debo has been taken off the board he can't come in and clean up your scrums right now his ankle is gonna be you know big guys ankles he's gonna need his ankle he fell pretty hard and I was like, you know, Trent Williams, he falls like he's six foot eight. So it takes yeah, a long a time long, for him to get yeah. to the ground. <laughs> and anytime someone rolls Jeez. up on him, I jump up and I scream, no, I would too. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Shanahan said all three guys are, are probable, uh, but day to day as the 49ers prepare for next Monday night's game in Minnesota against the Vikings. And that leads us to the Jets and Aaron Rodgers who continues to lord over this football team, even though he is not playing anymore. Five weeks removed from surgery to repair a torn Achilles tendon. He stunned onlookers yesterday at MetLife Stadium, showing up without crutches. And he also threw for about five minutes on the field before the Jets upset the Eagles 20-14. to Rodgers did not watch the game from a private box. He instead remained on the sideline, wore a headset, and contributed to the in-game conversation between the genius offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett. That's your guy. And man, is he good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, don't, I know the Jets won yesterday, but it wasn't because of their offense. I, I will say this. So what is going to happen? Is Aaron Rodgers going to pull off a miraculous comeback and actually make it back on the field before the season is over? He certainly is leading people down that path. Uh, I I remain a skeptic about it. He is not the same age as Cam Akers. Uh, he's a lot older, actually. but he's got an experimental surgery. Hey, hey, I hope it works. I really do, because that means there are going to be a lot of athletes that can line up for this type of surgery. So I'm hopeful that it does work, but I don't. I'm, ske- I'm I'm skeptical about it. Now I will say this: since he has had his presence on the sideline, they have played better. They've won some games. I'm not saying that he is directly connected to that but i think having him in the building especially the way this team fawned over him and had really seemed to embrace him being in this organization i think it does mean something to those guys to have him on the sideline even if it is with a a headset on as opposed to back at the crib or in the locker room or whatever it is they have won some games since he's been on the sideline well, I would rather have his voice in my ear if I was Zach Wilson than Nathaniel Hackett's voice. I'll I will be tell honest you, with you there. I will tell you whose ear or whose voice Zach Wilson is hearing in the Big Five. Oh, yeah. good tease there, player. Yeah, uh, one more injury player. to report now. Kyron Williams, Rams, sprained ankle, expected to miss next Sunday's game the for the back? Rams against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He is the running back. Ronnie Rivers also suffered a knee injury in the game yesterday. Could fall to sixth-round draft pick. Pick him up in your fantasy league. Zach Evans might get the call for the Rams at running back. Let me get on there. Against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Sorry, you're not going to be able to pick him up because I'm the worst team in the league, and I get dibs, I think. I I I, I thought that was the case, too, but considering I only have, like, one win in, in my other league. Maybe you can get him in that league. Well, I'm just saying, I got skipped over, so I don't know if it works the same way. Yeah, it might I don't be know random. How it works. Uh, all right, we'll take a break. I know it doesn't work in my favor very often, <laughs> that's for sure. We'll take a break, come back. Big Five's headed your way next. It is still 5-2 Texas Astros batting in the bottom of the sixth inning, game two ALCS. More Gwen and Chris on a Monday.
338 on the clock. Tony Gwynn Jr., Chris Sello, Matt Scraton. Got a big five headed your way. I saw something that was pretty hilarious over the weekend. and Many of you may have seen it. Um, Chris Jones, the defensive tackle uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs, was on the Kelsey podcast, and which is quickly becoming um, – who isn't at this it, point? I mean, that's right. It's quickly becoming everybody's favorite podcast. But he was telling the story about the combine. You know, in the combine, we often, for those of us of us who turn in to watch it, I know Chris L is not one of those guys. No, I did not see this highlight. <laughs> um, they usually have some type of tight leggings on. They they run it. Sometimes they'll have shorts. Uh, Chris Jones decided to go with the shorts and. Uh, he didn't know that the shorts weren't actually shorts. They were like compression slash boxer shorts. <laughs> so he tells us so there was air at the bottom of the, them. Well, it, they were they were compression. So there was you know it was it was tight. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but he tells the story. Not tight enough. <laughs> clearly, clearly, <laughs> he tells the story, and and clearly uh, Travis Kelsey already knew what was going to be said. So he's kind of egging him on, and he's telling the story. He's running the forty. And I, towards the end of the 40, Chris Jones just like falls. And I think most people who watched it live thought, OK, he was just falling. But apparently those shorts did not, um, let's just say, did not keep cover him everything. contained. They yeah. didn't keep oh, him yeah. contained. Oh, they started yeah. contained. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He did not end contained, which was why he decided to take the fall <laughs> in order to invo- avoid embarrassment. Uh, avoid uh, embarrassment. showing more well, than he For some, to show. it would be embarrassed. For some, maybe not. I'm not sure. But I don't think he wanted to do nudity <laughs> on national television. <laughs> it's, it's not really national television. Yes, everybody in the nation can view it yeah. if they pay for it. But it's, Well, it's, oh, uh, if they pay for it. I mean, like nobody will post the video. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I haven't been able to find age? it on YouTube 120 times. Exactly. Yeah, I think you so. could find it now that he's uh, exposed yeah. himself this, uh, to the world. This segment of the Gwen and Chris show <laughs> intended for mature audiences. <laughs> Please ask your parents for permission to listen. In Just, case you missed it, we are doing our show live on video now, starting today. Go to 97.3 The Fan SD on X or go to 97.3 The Fan YouTube page to catch the show. All right, without further ado, let's check some traffic and then the Big Five. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Traffic is sponsored by Lowe's. We've got a couple problems here, guys. One of them is this crash on the northbound 67, just past Prospect. Got a couple vehicles involved. They're over the right shoulder. Fire crews have got that right lane blocked. Also, northbound side of the 805, right around 8th Street, reports of a possible brush fire, some smoke visible from the right shoulder. Get the appliances you need right away at Lowe's. Explore the largest assortment of brands you trust in-store or online at the best values. Plus, take advantage of our everyday financing offers. Lowe's knows home improvement. Subject to credit approval. I'm Kelly Danica with and Chris, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. It's that time of the show when we check on the latest in sports. Only the most important topics and questions are brought to light. Stop what you're doing and listen. These news stories will astound and amaze you. The one, the only. Oh my God, who the hell cares? The Big Five starts now on 97.3 The Fan. And speaking of the YouTube stream right now, just want to say hi to Ivan, say hi to Javier, say What's hi up? to Guillermo, say hi to Maria, and our guy Brock also checking in with us on the YouTube stream. So. Uh, you know who I met at the Wave game? Who? I met Mailman Rob's wife yesterday really? at the game. Yes. That's an yes. interesting... <laughs> she was like, you know my husband, and I was like, huh? Do I? <laughs> and she said, Mailman Rob, and my face lit up. I was like, yeah, yeah, of course uh, I know Mailman you know, Rob. I haven't seen Mailman Rob on the Twitter here or on the X here recently. Yeah. If you're still out there, Mailman Rob, hit us up. Hit us up. All right. Number five. Actually, I hit that too early. I'm sorry. We have a quick update because last week we talked about some of the new sports that were going to be going into the 2028 Olympics or being voted on. And they did allow five sports into the 2028 Olympics. I guess they're calling it LA 28. So I guess I can call it that going forward. But baseball, softball, back Just in. Just say Olympics. You say LA 28. That could be a bunch of different things. The Olympics. Thank you. Baseball, softball, back in. Cricket is in, which I'm surprised cricket hasn't been in. <laughs> right. They better uh, start the match right now. 
Yeah, because they like last a week for and a half to play a cricket match. I do enjoy cricket, actually. You do? There's, there's, do a, not, no, there's you don't a video even game. know any of the Stop. rules. I love the video game on my phone. Uh, flag football, that's what we talked about. And flag football is going to be in the 2028 Olympics. So we might see some Tyree Kill. We might see some if of those America guys. America doesn't dominate flag football, I'm going to be very upset. Very upset. Uh, lacrosse is going to be in and also squash. I've played squash before. You're not right. easy. Wait, you, no, you no. Have not played no squash. squash. No, I'm sorry. It's squash. That's racquetball. Never mind. <laughs> squash is the one with the, 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 um, cocoon looking things okay i'm gonna move right right along okay <laughs> the, the number five the you know what i'm saying things? like i don't know what you're talking about what? i'm gonna go look at this right now no you don't Squash have time you get a big five you can't um, go look for stuff no i'm wrong yeah I'm completely wrong. i think wrong i played sport. squash okay all right here we go boy you are just a uh <laughs> athlete of all kinds <laughs> I try to get out there and he get said he, he said he enjoys he cricket. People play squash. I play he never cricket. played cricket. He enjoys cricket and has played squash. We don't believe you. I, I don't want to call you a liar, but my <laughs> God, are you a liar? I've played squash before. Nobody's played squash. Yes, you you could do it at like they have those courts inside where the, the squash <laughs> at the squash courts. Yes, come on. When I lived in Cincinnati, I played squash come all the time. On. It's good exercise. I, just, I do you're not a, believe you're it. A liar. I at don't squash it. courts. Is squash the one where you have to hit? It you off don't the even side know what sport it is. The side you know wall to the back racquetball wall. is the <laughs> sport you're describing. Okay. And I have, and they have racquetball courts everywhere. They don't have okay. squash courts anywhere. To, he said they had the squash courts. <laughs> <laughs> He's unbelievable, this guy. I have not played squash. I have played racquetball. It's a squash. They Go have out the to... squash courts out there. <laughs> what time's your cricket match start tonight? 7 p.m. <laughs> I was reading, re reading. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I was reading over the weekend about what the Padres 2024 rotation could look like, and there's no telling if Blake Snell, Michael Walker, or Seth Lugo will return, but you will have Joe Musgrove and you, Darvish, most definitely in the rotation. This question is going to focus on the fifth starter. Matt Waldron pitched well down the stretch, pitching in eight games, starting six of them. He had a 4.35 ERA and 31 strikeouts in 41 and a third innings. Chris, would you feel comfortable heading into the season with Matt Waldron as your fifth starter? I think they can do better. I, I, I'm not going to say I'd be uncomfortable. I mean, that that's not fair to, you know – but I, I think on paper they can do better than Matt Waldron, and I think they probably will. I, I don't think they're going to let everybody get away, whether no. it's Lugo, Waka, even Snell. They're going to get somebody to come back and be that number three. Uh, I think Nick Martinez would give me a lot more confidence than Matt Waldron. So I'm going to say no, I would not feel com comfortable. I think they can do better. Tony, would you feel comfortable with Matt Waldron as your start, fifth starter going into the year? No. I wouldn't, and that's no disrespect to, to Matt. I just think it's one thing that to, to have Matt piggyback in a, a season in which you don't have much of a choice because your guys are hurt, and he did a great job in his opportunities that he had. But over the course of 162, however many starts that is, I mean, I, it would be a big drop-off, quite frankly, if you're comparing him to the four and five the Padres had last year. Uh, and you know, that's with an MV with a possible Cy Young Award winner in that rotation. So I, I think, as Chris said, I think they can and, and will reach a little higher. Number four, the San Francisco Giants have formally interviewed assistant coach Alyssa Nakin for their managerial opening. The club confirmed yesterday. The news was first reported by Andrew Baggerly of the Athletic and. She's believed to be the first woman to interview for a managerial position in the majors after already being a few firsts with the Giants. She was a former standout softball player at Sacramento State and became the first full-time woman coach in the majors when she was added to Gabe Kapler's staff in January 2020. Tony, is Major League Baseball ready for a female manager? Um, I would say it depends on the organization. Um. I think there are some organizations that may be giants. Uh, giants in, you you include them in that that group. Um, there's some familiarity with the players in that organization. So, yeah, I don't know if all of baseball is ready for a woman to be at the helm in terms of manager. I mean, just think 
Kim Ng had to, she interviewed five different times before Derek Jeter hired her. And Derek Jeter knew her from, from, from previous uh, teams that he had been on. So, yeah, no, I, I think there, there are, there are some teams that I think are ready, but I think my guess, my honest opinion is that most organizations are not ready for that. Chris, is Major League Baseball ready for a female manager? First of all, I want to clear that I'm ready. You're okay. ready for yes, a female I manager. don't have any problem, and I, I think uh, especially this young lady would do a great job. But, no, I don't think baseball's ready to make that leap yet. I think it's going to take a bunch of more interviews. It's going to take somebody managing at the AAA level in a high-profile situation uh, to pave the way for the first big league woman manager. But I, I, I don't see any problem with it. I don't know why a woman couldn't manage a big league team, but that's my guess is that we're not quite there. All right. Number three. Can I just say one more time? Yeah. I'm ready. I thought that went without saying, but yeah. I know, but I better say it again before I start getting critiqued. Chris, I'm not sure how you feel about it. Are no, you... I just want to be sure that okay. people are sure how I feel about okay. it. He's ready for a female sure manager. That people are sure. That's right. Okay. The Phillies and the Dun- Hold on. Just got an update. That was weird. I just got an update on the computer saying it was going to turn off in 30 seconds. So I Panic to, set in. Panic did set in. Uh, the Phillies and Diamondbacks get underway tonight in game one of the NLCS. But I was talking to a few people at Rancho Bernardo High School on Friday night, and I was finding that people are not interested in the Diamondbacks. So, Chris, do you think it's bad for baseball if the Diamondbacks represent the National League in the World Series? Bad for baseball. <laughs> I don't know. The Marlins represented the uh, National League in the World Series. The Padres have represented the National League in the World Series. I can't imagine the Padres in 1998 had a gigantic following, following yeah. kind of coming out of nowhere to get there. You know, this is a I, – I mean, it, it makes you sound like it's got to be the Dodgers or the Mets or the Braves that have to play in the World Series, mm-hmm. and I just don't agree with that. So – no, I don't think it's bad. I don't have any problem with it. If the Diamondbacks knock off the Phillies, they're going to already – their already stature has gone up, knocking off the Brewers and the Dodgers. It's just going to go up some more. And, you know, why can't you tune in and watch Corbin Carroll play and Zach Gallon pitch? I, I'm not a fan of that discussion, but maybe for huge ratings, yeah, yeah maybe okay. there's something to it. Tony, what do you think? Yeah, that's probably the only place where that is really relevant, right, is in the ratings. I mean, Major League Baseball hasn't had a repeat champion in since the Yankees. Right. And so there is always parity in the game of baseball. Um, I think it's exciting because the Diamondbacks came into this year as the young team that had a bunch of young guys coming up to have, you know, to give them a chance, and they've done that and some. Um I think Corbin Carroll is an exciting player to watch. I think Cattell Marte, when he's healthy, is an exciting player to watch. I love seeing Alex Th- Alec Thomas trying to finally start to put it together. And then you got Zach Gallon and, and Wookie. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I say that I'm, I'm joking. Um, but I think it's, I, I don't have, a, I, I like to see new teams involved, especially because it, it at least. From the standpoint that we talked about teams tanking all the time, right? At least it shows that there are teams that are out there that go through their portion where they're not very good, but have done the work in between time to get to this point. Rangers being one. Now, they did it differently, but they didn't just sit back and lose 100 games for however many years. They they, they tried to get better. They did. They did. Number two. Uh, DC Animal on the YouTube stream says, we need new blood in there, tired of the same old teams. I agree. I, I agree. kind of understand that. Although I still think the Diamondbacks get whooped. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I was kind of shocked this was on the front page of one of the sports websites I go to, but the headline said, quote, Aaron Rodgers played role in Jets upset win over Eagles by suggesting play calls to New York coaches per report. That is a title, end quote. Per The Athletic, Rodgers wore a headset and he offered suggestions to Jets coaches during the game. He was not in Zach Wilson's headset. And Zach Wilson said he actually didn't even really see Aaron Rodgers during the game. Uh, But he said he was suggesting things to the coaching staff. Tonely. 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 
Has the media completely changed their narrative about Aaron Rodgers? Ah, uh, well, when he was with Green, when he was with Green Bay, he was a bad guy, and now he seems like he's a good guy to me, at least. I don't know that they they've changed their narrative. You know, when when player and said team are not on the same page, it could seem like people aren't good people and they they are unhappy. Um, there were plenty of reports that came out in that whole Packers. Rogers situation that seemed to indicate that the Packers were were egging this on all along. Uh, he's certainly in a, a better place, and this reminds me of the Aaron Rodgers that was happy in Green Bay when it was going well. So, listen, I, I think he just wants to play football, and since he can't play football, he's going to help. It's probably a great thing that Aaron Rodgers could suggest some things to Nathaniel. Uh, because, because you'd be better off with that guy in the green <laughs> helmet that goes J E T S Jets Jets Jets. I think place. it's like Fireman Ed it or something. Was, Bring it, him in. It probably was in Zach Wilson's best interest that yeah. Aaron Rodgers had a headset on, and even though he couldn't hear him, with at least it suggests things. I don't know if that's the right play call there. It's like you're not very good, Zach. Just throw it to the right, Chris. Yeah, Aaron I Rogers? just said it. Everything, anything's better than Nathaniel Hackett. So they call him Hack. No, sorry, and and Hack. I don't think Rodgers was as much of a villain as you're making him out to be in Green Bay. And I don't think what he's are you as talking much of about? a much of a sensation during the, during the uh, vaccination stuff. He was, was a the, villain. I just think that was the 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 end of a page or an end of a, a story that was it was coming to an end. All right. Number one. I've always found it very strange that so much of a game is left up to the flip of a coin. Well, an experiment involving 48 people flipping coins minted in 46 different countries for a total of 350,757 coin flips. Each time the participants noted whether the coin landed with the same side up as it was when it was launched, blah, 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 blah. They found the coin landed with the same side up as when it was launched 50.8% of the time. So basically... A coin toss is random. Now, Chris, is it time to move away from flipping a coin to decide major things in sports? Yes, I would love to see um, Trent hey, Williams hey. stand at midfield to with Tua <laughs> Tonga Bailoa before the Super Bowl do and, do a little, fans. and do a little Rochambeau. Oh, that would, that would be nice. That would be nice, No, Tony. this is silly. Yeah, silly. Silly it's, scrappy it's 50, topic. 50. That's good. It's, I that's, thought it was a good experiment because they were thinking that the head side of an American coin would be would always flip it because it's heads. heavier. Yeah. Exactly. W O T. Waste of time. Eight three three two eight eight zero nine seven three. Chris versus the fans. Up next.
All right, welcome into the uh, 4 o'clock hour. Final uh, segment or two here of Gwen and Chris on a short Monday program heading into Monday Night Football. Bottom of the hour, we'll take you out to uh, coverage of uh, the uh, kickoff between the Chargers and the Dallas Cowboys, the Monday Night Football game tonight here on 97.3. The Fan wrapping up week six of the National Football League, and uh, we want to remind everybody out there, if you're just tuning into the show, Today, we are now doing our show live on video as well. You can go to at uh, 97.3thefansd on Twitter or go to the 97.3 The Fan YouTube page. You can watch us in action. And uh, that would be Gwen and Chris and Matt Scraby all together here in the Odyssey Palace, uh, debuting on our streaming for the first time today, so we invite you to enjoy the show that way as well. Uh, Texas Rangers with a four-run first inning today, and they have made it stand up through seven innings in Houston. Rangers still lead the Astros now 5-3 with the Rangers batting in the top of the eighth inning. Adelise Garcia, Mitch Garver, and Nathaniel Lowe all had RBI singles in that four-run first inning. Framber Valdez committed two errors and that contributed to the Rangers batting around in the first inning. Since then, Houston has come back. Solo home runs by Jordan Alvarez and Alex Bregman, an RBI double by Michael Brantley. They got Nathan Avaldi out of the game after six innings, but the uh, Rangers continue to lead and are six outs away right now from a 2 nothing series lead, which would have to consider be considered, Tony, very much a surprise against the uh, defending World Series champs. Texas just keeps on rolling. Yeah, man. It's uh, we often talk about. You get to this time of year. It's a lot of times about the mistakes you make that end up being the reason why you win or lose. And uh, those two errors early uh, certainly cost Fromber, and he didn't have his best stuff. Two and two thirds, seven hits. Yeah, four of those five of those four of those five runs were earned. He one walk, six punch outs and a homer, but uh, that's not who the Astros are used to having on the mound. That, that version of Fromber. No. And he, he's, he struggled a little bit throughout the, probably the last couple of weeks of the season and into the postseason. Yeah. Well, give uh, credit though to the Astros bullpen. They have completely yes, shut the have. door. Texas has only one hit since the third inning. So uh, there's still a chance for Houston to come back in this game. Although the Astros, there's that darn stat again, Tony, zero for five hitting with runners in mm. scoring position. Where have we seen that before? We've All seen right. It often, uh, game uh, one of the National League Championship Series is coming up later tonight. The Philadelphia Phillies, Zach Wheeler going against the Arizona Diamondbacks, Zach Gallen. All right. That gets us to Chris versus the fans and an opportunity for you to qualify for a grand prize two nights stay at the westgate las vegas and tickets to see frankie valley you can catch the uh, legendary singer along with the four seasons live in concert at the international theater it's at westgate las vegas resort and casino this show's a must see for any fan of classic rock and roll get tickets and vip packages now at ticketmaster.com the westgate las vegas Resort and Casino features newly designed premier rooms, part of their $70 million room renovations, bringing back legendary Vegas fun. Let's play ball. If you had one shot, one opportunity to take down the human almanac himself, howdy do. Now is your time. Listen to me, this guy is dangerous. Now is your opportunity to win a prize. Well, I hope you know what you're in for. Chris versus the fans starts now on 97.3 The Fan. All right. Just have a couple rules to go through. You have to make it through three questions. Each question will get more difficult. If you get the question right, you move on. If you get it wrong and Chris gets it right, you're eliminated. But if Chris gets it wrong, then you move on to the next question or you win. And if you're a first time player, let us know. Before we get into the first question, you'll get that question for free. Uh, and you will start on the second question. I had a funny comment on our YouTube stream from someone that said, long time listener, first time viewer, which I thought was <laughs> you're, really you're, funny. You're on your own in that I one. Know, Everybody's a uh, first time viewer today. Yes. yes. Uh, also, Woodsy checking in with our YouTube. Shout so, out to Welcome Stephen to the revolution, Woods. fellas. And I got to say, 
Without that show, we are not doing the cameras yeah, right sure now are. because they have. So that's who I can blame for this. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. can blame them yes. for it, and I will thank them for it because uh, Paul yeah. in that in the morning show have tried really hard to get all these cameras working and make it easy, and they have. So thank you guys. Shout out to uh, Ben and Woods uh, for starting this madness that we are dialed in. We got to keep up with the Joneses, man. All we right, do. let's keep we up do. with our first contestant. How about Mike? Welcome to the show. Come on down. Do, 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 do. Dun, Thank dun. You. I am a first time player. First time player. Good Here luck, we go. Mike. People are getting to see us do this for the first time. It's Qu a lot. Question number two. <laughs> Justin Herbert took over as Charger starting as the Charger starter after what quarterback sustained a punctured lung before the game? Place. Go with Tyrod Taylor. You're going with the correct answer. Wow. Nice work. Wow. Came up with it. The wow. last second. Wow. Last second. One answer away from qualification. Here we go. From 2008. To 2013, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron won Brown. four of five MVPs. Who won the other? 2008 to 2012. He won what? Four of the five? Yes, but that would it? be part of the question. I see. <laughs> Sorry. Stay there. Stay there. You could still win. Uh, no, it's my guy. <laughs> it's the only reason why he's not. It's the only reason I know. <laughs> Who is it? Derek Rose of the Bulls won it 2011. <sighs> Sorry, Mike. Magical season for the Bulls. Thank and you for Derek playing. Rose until he got hurt, and then it all went downhill. It did. <laughs> it all went downhill. Sorry, Mike. We move to our next contestant. Brian, welcome to Gwen and Chris. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. All right. Let's get it. First question. Brian, I need you to finish this sports chant. J E T S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, well done, Brian. I didn't know how that was going to go, but I loved it. <laughs> Driving down the freeway, people are looking at him like, why is he chanting that? Jets. Where, where are the Jets? Question, on? question number two. The there, excuse me, there are three players tied. Oh, with, wait, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. This coming into today, coming into sorry, today. Let me rephrase this coming into today. There are three players tied with the most home runs this postseason with four. Name two of the three, please. Uh, I have no idea. Mm, no mm. idea is definitely not one of them. Stay there, though, Brian. But Mr. Ello's got to get two. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure I got one. Yeah, I'm Nick sure. Castellanos hit two in two games and uh, two straight games, so I know he's got four. Yeah, he... And I'm pretty sure you're Dan Alvarez because he homers every game. Yeah. So those are my guesses. That is I can't correct. name the third, Sorry, at least Brian. on not It would offhand. be Royce Lewis oh, as yeah. the third. Yeah, the Twins guy. He was yeah. no longer in the postseason. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll start over with Brian. Nope. Nope. With, sorry. With Jason. Jason, welcome to the Jason. show. Jason. Jason. Go get him, Jason. How you guys doing? Pretty good. We're well. Good. Let's get it going. All right. I'm going to get into Scraby's bag here. This is hard hitting questions here. Who is the manager of the Texas Rangers? I'm sorry, who? Texas Rangers. I'm sorry, who? Did you ever hear that clip? No. No, oh, it's one of my favorite drops. Yeah. Of all time. That would have to be uh, Bruce That would be correct. We used, to have a, we used to have a drop of Bruce Bochy saying, I'm sorry, who? Oh. And it used to be we, very. We had was, one? No, I don't no, think we, we did. didn't at the other old station. Oh, ah, gotcha. okay. All the right. guy, our board ops used to use it often when we say something that was kind of off center. Ah. Bruce Bochy would come on and it made me laugh. Every now time. we just uh, play this. Same in oh! logo. Yeah, I'm sorry. Who would be better? <laughs> yeah. I must say. Here we go. Question number two. 
Dak Prescott wears what number? This is tough. He wears number eight. Number eight. Stay there. Hello for the steal. I'm good on numbers. You are? I yeah, he's half that. Four. That, my wow. friend, is correct. We move to our next contestant. Rich, come on down. Do, 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 do. Hey, Rich. Let's rock. Let's oh, rock. I like first, it. I let's like rock. It. first question. <laughs> Another one of those whose manager is this? The Astros. Astros manager. Man, why you guys give me the hard one? <laughs> I don't know. That's such a shame. Dusty Baker. That's right. The oh. old man. There you go. The old man. <laughs> Dusty Baker. Wait is, a second. There's now a new leader in the home run race. You are down. Alvarez just hit another home run. My goodness. Uh, the game has been cut to one. His second of the day makes it five to four in the eighth inning. Go ahead, Scrape. Sorry. All right. Here we go, Jason. Jason, uh, you might need to turn your radio down a little bit. Here we go. Question number two. Oh, no. Did Jason Did drop? What? Did we drop him? We didn't mean to. Oh, I didn't we, we didn't choose. drop him. We ch what? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Is he gone? I don't he know was, what happened. He was one question deep too. I know he had an he had a it, correct it, it, answer at his. All right, Jason, if you can call back, that would help. But I don't know how he's going to do it? Until then, we'll have to move on to Rich. Oh, ri wait! That's... Rich just hung up too. Rich just you're just hanging about... up on everybody. I didn't screen. hang up how on him. About that time? Ryan, we do hang up on him too. <laughs> if you want me to. No, I don't want you to. Okay, there's Ryan. Ryan, welcome to the show, man. You there? Hey there. Hey, hey there. Ryan. Poor technology has uh, led to your uh, ascension to the show. <laughs> Here we go. Question number Love one. It. What team, Ryan, won the NBA title last season? Milwaukee Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> that is incorrect. Nuggies. <laughs> <laughs> Different Nuggies. Indeed it is. Oh, gosh. The, qu <laughs> the questions have just been dwindled down. Robert. I, I, I will say I didn't spend much time. You did. Them. You did. So this is what is this? Uh, is this what you would call producer karma right here? Yeah. A yeah. Bit? I okay. could, yeah, I could call it that. All right. Here we go, Robert. Welcome to the show. Hello's got ice in his veins today. Hello <laughs> does has ice in his veins. Here we go. Question number one. Oh, he's doing the Austin Reeves. Let, let me inject <laughs> <Yes>. myself. <laughs> Who, again, on the game of whose manager is this? The Diamondbacks. Terry Lovello. Wow. Quick answer. Nice Love job. it. St. John's nice Hospital. Job. <laughs> Santa yes, that is where he was born. <laughs> Question number two. I'll never forget how creepy he thought Chris was. He didn't think nothing. He was sure. like, what? You know what hospital I was born in? What Philadelphia Philly is hitting 500 so far this postseason. Bryce Harper? Bryce! <laughs> Not quite. Stay there. Well, it's one of uh, eight other guys. <laughs> Seems like Castellanos is doing well. Word. Could be him. Word. And I'm going to try... Let me just think for a second. I'll try Bryson Stott. Bryson Stott. That was an interesting guess. It's a good guess, though. It's not a good guess. Not this it's time. Not correct. Not this time. Yeah. Yeah. So we move on to the next round. The answer was Trey Turner. Yep. Trey Turner sitting five bills. The guy who wow. was most maligned <laughs> by the Philly really faithful this year. Did not know. Here we go. Question number three. All right, Robert. For the victory. Question number three. So it's got to be hard. Here we go. Prior to Atlanta, which National League Central team? was the last to have five players with 25 home runs or more in a season. Ooh. You sure it's National League Central team? Yeah, it's a it definitely it would yeah, it's definitely a National okay. Central team. The Cincinnati Red? You better knock wow. it. Oh, Way to go, Robert. Nice job. Let me read you these names. At least two of them I think you'll you'll recognize. Adam Duvall, Scooter Gannett, Jeanette, I think it was. Yeah. Whatever happened to him? Scott Schebler. Whatever happened to him? Eugenio Suarez. I know where he went. And Joey Votto. 
thing. Very right good. Now. 2017. Balls were nice flying job, at an Robert. absurd rate. Yes. Very good. Nice work. Nice work, Robert. You are the winner. Chris versus the fans today. You have a chance to qualify for that trip to Las Vegas. Stay on the line. We will uh, take a break, check some traffic. We've got one final segment ahead before Monday Night Football. As mentioned, the Jordan Alvarez solo homer, his second of this game, has made it 5-4 Rangers over the Astros. Houston batting bottom of the eighth. We'll keep you up to date when we come back. Now, Kixie Traffic with Kelly Danik. Traffic is sponsored by Belmont Parks Fall Festival. Got a few Don't things have going time on to here. listen to an entire fan talk show? They're making radio fun again. The Odyssey app's chaptering feature allows you to skip any segment you want on 97.3 The Fan. U.S. Bank is ranked number one in customer satisfaction with retail banking in California by J.D. Power. Since California is home to most award shows, we prepare to thank you speech. To Californians everywhere, we've been proud to help you plan, budget, and save smarter. Our goal tracking and budgeting tools would have no place to shine if it weren't for you, and we can't thank you enough for that. And thank you to our real-life humans who go above and beyond for our customers every day. Bravo, U.S. Bank, bravo! For J.D. Power 2023 awards.
just want to get ahead of this. Yes, I know my headphones are busted, and I need to get a new pair. Did anybody say anything? No, they haven't. But I want to get ahead of it. As I said, before anybody says anything. Since we're on, uh, we go. I can't hide. Yeah, I can't hide this no more. So, you know, occasionally if. Somebody Brady please help Tony Gwynn Jr. out. He's uh, he's suffering out there. He doesn't don't. have the ability to go get another I don't pair need heads, any so. help. However, <laughs> I'm going to ride these bad boys until they completely fall apart, and we're we're really a day away from it. Well, I am... Uh, <laughs> That's what you said on Friday. I know, but I've been, tell you I've been able to get Tony. them on my ears, and they're still lasting. I live in that world as well. I, I have a whole bunch of broken stuff <laughs> and stuff that is just not 100% right, and you know, I've always worn clothes with holes in them uh, because they're comfortable. Right. And I don't want to change them. Now, if I grew up in this day and age, you, it would be just uh, fine. A hundred percent. It used to be if you get the smallest of tear in your jeans or your shirt or Gotta something, go. your mom would toss it out. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I'm always comfortable with things I already have. It's the same reason like when Scraby talks about getting a new phone, like I get uncomfortable with that. I finally learned how to use this one. I don't want to have to start over. I don't over want again. to have to start over with a new one. And they always assure me at the store, at the Apple Place, or wherever well, I go. Because you're, you're buying an iPhone. Uh, so. There you whatever go. It so, is. We're not doing this. All right, Scraby, we're just not doing this. Stay out of it for a second. Will you and your green bubbles. My stay goodness. over there. My buddy. phone is basically the same. No, it's not. It's anyway. just a little bit bigger. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, when I asked you. the attendant at the Apple store uh, about the new phone, he goes, it's exactly like the one you already <laughs> that's, have. That's, that's, and it just they never say that is. All the time. <laughs> it never is. It just isn't. There's no way it's going to be. And I don't believe you. I, so I that's think, why I don't like to change up. And I totally respect the guy wearing his headset yeah, until they fall off his head. They literally. I mean, I mean look at the one I have. I was just about to bring it up. If everybody wants to see, go to Chris's camera. Go to our cameras on YouTube or on 97.3 The Fantasy on X. Chris has been using one headset or one headphone earbud for like a year and a half now yes my other and, earbud and Tony, broke off about, well over a year ago i was ago. just showing the people how bad my headset Look at is this, chris whose is worse mine or his yours uh, because <laughs> at least tony has two ears yeah but his is uh, hanging i gotta by i gotta a yeah, i gotta tuck them in his is hanging by a thread mine's pretty much hanging by a thread too so I guess. See, this is going to be both the cause of us, are, of us spending money on new stuff. This yeah, we're going, going to have to go out and get some new headphones <laughs> if we're going to be on the uh, on the video stream. I actually am going to go get some new shirts too. I cannot wear the same black shirt every single day. <laughs> See, <laughs> people are going to discover that your uh, that your um, wardrobe is not too deep. It's limited. It's. Yeah. I I have no problem saying. It is. I'm like Homer Simpson. I wear jeans and a black t shirt every day. They're going to see my Nike yes, pink. Oh, yoga yes. pants I like to wear in here often. I've never seen yeah, those. Yeah, you have. You just don't know their yoga pants because yeah. they, they look comfortable. But they're pink? I didn't know. Uh, they're like pinkish red. Oh, okay. You've seen no, I think right. Sammy You've will be them. happy that uh, we're now on uh, streaming by uh, Barber because I'll go get my hair cut a little more often. Want to ah, keep, yeah. keep it organized. I mean, it's, you know, I'm not a big fan of being on the stream, to be He's honest not. with you. Right? <laughs> during the break. Chris... I've been fighting against it the entire time. <laughs> sure Chris, during Man. the break, said, are we like doing this like Every day, right? Movie. I thought it was just a one day. I thought this was just a a trial. Yeah. The no, the trial, trial was last, last week. week. <laughs> yeah. This so anyway, anybody. you can watch us on the uh, at ninety seven three, uh, the fan SD uh, on uh, the Twitter feed or on the YouTube channel. So if you're just tuning in, that is a new addition to Gwen and Here, Chris, us on the yes. screen. On YouTube, uh, people are chatting, saying, okay, that's pretty janky about your guys' headphones. Yeah, that no, was Bruce's fan 619. Yeah. We know him. Hey, listen, you wanted to know the real us? You, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Yeah, you're we get can't it. fake it out anymore. I mean, and I always eat stuff on the during the Neat. show, now during commercial breaks. Does that mean if something gets caught between listen, my teeth, now it's going to be on the screen? Ah! That's part of what Scraby and I need to discuss. I feel shows, really bad I for the people who tune in and see a piece yeah. of spinach caught between. This my... is one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to oh, do the oh, cameras oh, you because you guys will won't, won't eat oh, on the air. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll keep telling you. Uh, some more comments from the YouTube stream. Uh, ben and Woods looking good, gentlemen. Again, thank you, Ben and Woods and and Paul, really for for putting this all together. Yeah, and shout out to Paul. Up. He did all the 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 grunt work. Uh, you on can this thank first. him on your own time. I'm not thanking them for this <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I was very comfortable in my radio world off of a screen. I don't need the. I'm not going to thank these guys for putting me through this added stress now every day. 
Uh, some other comments. Uh, I'm so glad you guys are doing this. Please keep up the great work. Uh, Ryan Powell, Niner fan from Alesmith. When you were live, I'm not as annoying as Scravy, but I still think the Dolphins and Niners will be in the Super Bowl. So anyway, I'm just getting used to this. I'll be looking through the stream a little bit here throughout the shows, and if uh, if I you feel say like something I good, in, yeah, you might get in there. Uh, Your Dan Alvarez, by the way, with his two home runs today. Uh, Astros still trail despite those two home runs, 5-4 Texas batting in the top of the ninth inning. But Alvarez apparently barely made it into the lineup today, Tony. I saw this. Had a uh, major virus. Uh, he's got headaches. He's got stomach issues. Dusty Baker said, I got a virus. Everybody got a virus. You so he's be in a lineup player. He's going in a lineup, and it's a good thing he did because without him, they'd be they'd be pretty much done. Yeah. Uh He's Sorry, kept Jordan, him in you're this not game. missing this game, buddy. Yeah, he's playing, but uh, Rangers are three outs away from a 2 nothing series lead. So there you have it. We'll uh, be back at it again tomorrow. You get a full four hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. Man, I'm, gonna I'm to likely to I eat. Can't wait till... I'm likely to eat during the four-hour show. I'm I just can't saying. wait until Chris wears his Todd Helton Tennessee football jersey. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? Nothing, but that's – <laughs> See, see now you got to bring this – No, no, now you got to bring this stuff out, Chris, because we talk about it on the air and people want to see what you know, your Todd Helton football jersey looks like. He's got an eclectic – what, you need to, yeah, there. you need to wear your uh, Tua in here as well. My Tua that isn't really the correct <laughs> color green. It's like that yeah. I got for like fifteen dollars online. It's like forest green. It's the aqua. wrong dolphin green. <laughs> All right, we gotta go. We'll see you guys tomorrow.